Hey, good morning, everybody. Hope y'all are having a fantastic day. I'm sitting here in my tack room. I've got a horse saddled right outside. I'm fixing to go crawl on. I'm sitting in my tack room so I can share this video because it's pretty darn windy outside. So you might even be able to hear the wind coming in here. But uh, I had something I want to share with you guys. This is something that I'm trying to work on it myself. It's something that I'm trying to help other people see. It's something that I'm really trying to get better at in myself with my horses. And it's this idea of trying to better understand where they're at and what they need. And here's what I'm, what I'm really thinking here this morning. A lot of times at my clinics, I will see people literally reach up with their arms, wrap their arms around the horse's head, around the horse's muzzle, pull that horse's head and muzzle to them, and then kiss them. And oftentimes, as I watch that, I'm just trying to read where that horse is and just trying to try to see if I can see how that horse receives it. And I have to say, most of the time, it is not received in the manner in which the human probably hopes that it would be. So if I think about it like this, let's say I'm spending some time with my horse and my horse needs something from me, okay? I don't know what that is. I don't know exactly what it is that my horse needs. Therefore, I don't give it to them. What I do give to them though, is what I understand and what I want to give. So I give them something oftentimes that they don't necessarily need and or want. And I think when I give that to them, it's going to create this mindset or behavior in them that's gonna get them to trust me more, to like me more, to want to be around me, want to uh, willingly, dare I say work, or maybe I'll say put out some effort for me. And the majority of the time it doesn't do that at all. From a human perspective, I could put it this way, Let's say you've got two people and those two people speak a different love language. Person A, their primary love language is affirming words. Person B, their primary love language is receiving gifts. As they spend time around one another, if person B, whose primary love language is receiving gifts, shares with person A, whose primary love language was affirming words, if, if person B shares with person A through this idea of receiving gifts is the best way for me to show them how I care, my question is this, is person A going to feel more loved? Is person A going to be drawn more to want to be around person B. No, oftentimes, person A feels as if they're not loved at all. Person B standing over here saying, but I gave you this gift. Well, because person A speaks a different love language, that gift didn't mean anything to them. So we're at times we're given things that we want to have a certain meaning, but because the person or the animal that we're giving them to views life different, speaks a different love language, needs something different other than what we want to give, we don't end up with the same effect that we hoped we would when we gave whatever it is that we gave. So... I have nothing against rubbing on a horse. I have nothing against laying my hands on a horse and putting my heart in my hands and trying to show that horse that they did a great job, that I, I, I truly am not here to hurt them, that I truly understand what they're saying. I have nothing against that. I don't even have anything against someone kissing, literally kissing on their horse. But what I do want people to start to look at is 
just because you show that horse affection by kissing on them doesn't mean that it's going to get you what you hope it's going to get you. Because I've seen some horses, I've seen a lot of horses that get hugged on and kissed on a lot and are some of the worst horses mentally and emotionally to be around. And if I put myself in their shoes, it would be like, those horses are screaming for something and they're around people that from the horse's perspective, it might look like these people just don't care because they refuse to give me what I need. They always give me this other thing, but I don't need that. There's a time and a place for that, but I better be careful about how I use that because it's crazy. I have I've been around some really good horsemen and I'm, I'm trying my best to look at myself every day and become one of those people but I've seen some of these really, really good horsemen that can literally just be in the presence of a horse. And I'm saying not even touching them, just standing nearby. And the peace and the contentment that is coming out of that horse radiates out of them as they stand there relaxed and asleep. It radiates out of them so excessively that you can see it from a long ways away. So if you're dealing with a horse that is struggling mentally and emotionally, they're, they're, they act like they're mad, they act like they're just, for lack of a better way to say it, they're, they're, they're mad at the world. They're, they're, they just, they're always grouchy. If I have the opportunity to spend time around that horse, maybe I need to really evaluate myself, evaluate what I'm doing, look at how my approach is with that horse and ask myself, am I truly out here for this horse? Trying to better understand, not just what this horse is saying to me, but trying to better understand what this horse needs from me and would I be more willing to give that than what I think this horse needs and what I feel like I want to give because if I can if I can make that adjustment in my mind here's what you'll see laying hands on a horse can be extremely beneficial but laying hands on a horse can also be harmful in some ways so if I'm going to do it, I need to understand the power in it and how it truly works for the horse. But what I'm talking about can be so powerful, can be so, can be, have, have such an impact on a horse's mind, can be so freeing for that horse to allow them to see something different that you don't even have to lay hands on that horse a lot of the time because you can give this what I'm talking about this understanding this willingness to see it from the horse's perspective you can give that a lot of times without ever laying a hand on a horse so I can do that from a distance and oftentimes these horses don't just need us right next to them loving and hugging on them sometimes they need us to just look at them from a distance and try to better understand where they're at that day, what they're needing from us that day and show them from a distance before we ever get close that we're gonna try our best that day to be that person, that person that they need, that person that they're crying out to, that they're trying to open up to. It can be life-changing for the human, can be life-changing for the horse, and can bring both of them to a place where it is truly, truly amazing to watch the two of them work together. So, I don't know if any of this made sense. 
I don't know if this can help anybody. I don't know if anybody even be willing to take this on and truly look at it from this perspective. But I can promise you this, if you followed me around for a while and you got to deal with some of the horses that I'm getting to deal with that are so bitter and so resentful because of what they've been needing for so long and not getting, that it might be a little bit easier to see what I'm talking about. All right, I hope this can help you guys. I know it's changing my life. So let's do our best to not just try to be this person for our horses, but let's go try to be this same person towards the other people in our lives. Let's be interested in learning their love language. Let's be interested in trying to speak to them, with them, what they need and not just what we feel like giving. All right, you guys have a fantastic day.